Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics, and this is the Desert Tech MDR-X. Bullpups. Kind of a curiosity for us Americans. My first experience with a bullpup was the Enfield SA-80 when I was in the Army. Uh, we had the occasion to train with some British guys, and one was like, hey, would you like to try this thing? And I put 60 rounds through it, handed it back, and said, no, thank you. And he agreed wholeheartedly and said, man, it's basically a crime against God. So that kind of shaped my opinion to bullpups and many, many years since then, I've encountered bullpups, uh, different manufacturers, and I pretty much kept the same opinion of the manual of arms is to dramatically different. There isn't really a time saving there. Yes, the, the biggest distinct advantage is you can get a longer barrel and a shorter overall gun, and that's a huge appeal, especially if you're gonna run a suppressor. But is that trade off necessarily worth it? And then, of course, you look into bullpups and you hear about problems that plague almost universally every bullpup out there being the triggers aren't as good uh, and reliability can be somewhat of an issue. And then there's the whole fear of your head being right next to the chamber if you have like an out of battery detonation or something like that, which can be a, a concern that we should at least take into account when choosing a weapon. But I don't think manufacturers would necessarily put out something unsafe, at least knowingly. Uh, so. I wanted to give a bullpup another chance. And the latest iteration of the MDR, which is the MDRX, is the one I chose. 16 inch barrel, 223 wild chamber, one and seven twist. Uh, ambi controls, this thing has a lot of really cool features, but it's the first thing I noticed when I got it out of the box. I bought it, it showed up at the house, I took it out of the box, and I noticed the OEM rail. Yeah, your eyes are not deceiving you. Someone in QC completely missed the boat. Uh, maybe they're having a bad day, or they, their QC is like 1 in 10 rifles, or, or whatever. But the glaring problem is the fact that my forward rail section on my handguard is at a different elevation than the actual monolithic part of the receiver, which is problematic. Now, I'm not going to put iron sights on this thing. I didn't for the purpose of the review. I went with a Vortex 1-6 to and an offset uh, Holosun 5.8T on the Unity Tactical Mount. Uh, but if I were to run iron sights, that's going to be something problematic. Also, if I were going to run a laser device on this rifle, if it had you know, real estate, or if I had to put it on there for some reason, if I was gonna set it up for night vision, that's problematic because now my Picatinny interface is not in line with the bore axis of the rifle. I don't wanna hold this against them, but I'm gonna, because that's something that definitely should have been identified prior to the gun leaving the factory. I got online and said, you know what, maybe they just do things differently. Let me see if this is a design feature for some reason. And all the photos I could find of this rifle, including all the cool, high color, high, highly, well, well-produced uh, literature that came with the rifle, had the rail being monolithic with the actual receiver. So I was like, huh. Okay, well, that's already we're off to a bad start. But let's go ahead and get the gun on the range and see how it does. Uh, and trying to forget about that one initial problem I was going to have. As far as features go, getting right into it, first thousand rounds I ran their OEM muzzle device, which is a brake, uh, and set the rifle up, like I said, with the one to six, get it zero, went ahead and zeroed it for 100 yards, and just got a really good feel for the gun in that first 500 rounds before the burn down. Another thing that eventually worked itself out in that first 500 rounds is the Ambi Safety Selector. It has Ambi Safety Selector, and it also has Ambi Magazine releases on both sides. The ejection port is reversible. It comes in two different options. You can have a forward eject, which actually ejects the spent casing straight forward, or a side eject. The forward eject's a little bit more expensive. Also, just because I had a little bit of hesitancy as much as I was trying to keep an open mind, it's a more complicated or more intricate system, so tolerance stacking. I just went ahead, went with an old, old-timey side eject, like we've always been doing it, because I'm not gonna shoot the rifle a whole lot left-handed, so I wasn't too worried about that. 
the rear of the gun where the magazine goes, I also have an additional magazine release. So I've got three ways to release a magazine and I've got a bolt catch bolt release. Ambi charging handles, which can also be used to lock the bolt to the rear. And if you want to do a slap on it because you want to be cool, MP5 cool, you can do that as well. The, all of the controls, talking about the trigger specifically, but all of the controls getting into it were very gritty. Uh, they did break in during that first 500 rounds, so not a huge issue, but something I wanted to identify. It is a short stroke gas piston rifle that is adjustable, so I can adjust it for suppressor, which we'll get to. Uh, and the overall recoil and pulse is fine. Manual of arms, I noticed in that first 500 rounds, I consider a three second reload, bolt lock reload, to be a standard. Some people can do it faster, some people can do it a little bit slower, but right around three seconds of on target, one round, reload, one round, is a very reasonable time. Now, MDRX quotes a 1.3 to 1.5 second reload on the same website, a little bit weird. Uh, I don't know what they're talking about, I don't know what the standard is for that, uh, but when I got into that first 500 rounds, I was hovering just over three seconds consistently when reloading the gun once I got used to the manual of arms. You pick it up pretty quickly because it's not too dramatically different than running an AR. And I was shooting this and shooting a traditional AR setup at the same time doing different videos, and I wasn't like, oh god, I forgot how to use a traditional AR. You just learn the method and you work on it. and. It's not going to be as fast as an AR. There's just no way. So no free lunches. You are trading off an ease of reload, maybe, uh, definitely for me and definitely for most shooters, especially come from the AR platform, for a shoulder, shoulder overall length. Because now I've got a 16-inch gun, even with a suppressor on it, be a SOCOM Mini or a full-size SOCOM, the two suppressors I used for the review after the first thousand rounds, uh, I've got a very controllable profile. I am much closer to the suppressor. But the overall length is shorter than what I'd get from like an 11 or a 12 inch gun, traditional AR setup or traditional rifle magazine well forward of the trigger guard, uh, forward of the controls, if you will. Once I got comfortable with it in that first 500 rounds, got a feel for it, kind of worked into the process, got used to the reloading procedures. Uh, the trigger specifically in the first 500 rounds, it is a heavier trigger. And one of the things that it consistently plagues uh, or has plagued bullpup designs is because the just the nature of the way the trigger mechanism has to work I've got a control surface that goes all the way back here to interface with where the uh, hammer actually is because the whole firing mechanism chamber and everything's moved back in a bullpup which is pretty obvious but some people don't think about that the trigger is here but the hammer and the sear and everything are back here so there's these uh, long arms, I guess that's the best way to describe them, I'm sure there's a technical term for them, that have to reach all the way back into the gun, and that le leaves the opportunity of a lot more surface area contact between those control surfaces and the receiver, lower receiver, and upper, upper receiver of the firearm, which tends to result in a heavier, grittier, longer trigger. To their credit, it's not bad. It's hovering right around five pounds, but it's consistent, it's got a good break to it, a decent, re decent reset. And it's something that you could get used to It's something that's manageable. Is it my ideal trigger setup? Absolutely not. But it's not as terrible as some bullpup triggers I've shot in the past. And it, it didn't make me love the gun, at least that, that one thing alone, but it did make me appreciate the fact that someone was paying more attention to some of the problems that consistently plug bullpups, the trigger being a big one. Another thing you can do with the MDRX, which is not something I did for the review process, is it's multi-cal capable. And that's not just something the manufacturer said and then never offered the barrels or the conversion kits. You can get them. You can go on Gunbroker or you can get them direct from the manufacturer or one of their authorized dealers. Uh, you can convert it to 308. You can convert it to a 10 point, I think it's 10.5 inch. Or even this one, you can convert it to 6.5 Creedmoor if that's something that you wanted to be into. Uh, that alone is pretty cool. Uh, it's more modularity than we get from most of the AR style or the traditional layout guns that we see out there. So after that first 500 rounds, uh, same thing we do in every review video, the 500 round burn down, which is 500 rounds as quickly as possible to see if any, any issues arise in 500 rounds in a very short period of time that I wouldn't notice shooting the same 500 rounds over a much longer period of time. So we're going to get a lot of heat on this gun, an unrealistic amount of heat. And let's see how this mostly polymer gun holds up to the 500 round burn down.
first to last round, no issues. Super happy about that, because I was a little bit concerned, again, trying to be as objective as possible, as I've already said a few times in the video, but I just have to admit that, that I am anti-bullpup. I, I always have been. So this gun is, I'm warming up to it by, by the point I got done with the 500 burn burndown, no pun intended, right there at 1,000 rounds. At this point, I swapped out muzzle devices so I could start running it suppressed. Why? Because it has a suppressor setting and I like shooting suppressed. I generally don't like shooting unsuppressed if I can avoid it. And because it's a bullpup, I can run a mini can and get a very short gun, or I can run a larger can. So during the next thousand rounds, which was all suppressed, I used either a Surefire RC2 Mini or an RC, uh, RC2 full-size suppressor on the suppressor setting. The ejection behavior is going to be a little bit different on a bullpup than what it is on an AR. So I am having a little bit of not that textbook three o'clock ejection, depending on which suppressor I was running, or how fast I was getting on the gun or how warm the gun was. But suppressed on the suppressed setting, it ran fantastic. Uh, and I, I wasn't easy on this gun. In fact, I knocked the whole review out in two range trips. So one day I shot a thousand rounds, 500 rounds, let the gun cool down, then I did the 500 round burn down. And the next time I came to the range, alternated between two suppressors so I wasn't completely killing my suppressors, and did another thousand rounds right there, just in that one, I think I was on the range for maybe six hours, knocked out that next thousand rounds. So over two days of shooting, 2,000 rounds fired, uh, it performs very well suppressed. It, it does feel different, and that's important because recoil pulse is part of our manual of arms. Our ability to control the gun, recoil is a factor in that. I feel like I'm getting just very gentle dental work when I run the gun for a prolonged period of time because my head's right there next to that reciprocating bolt versus just being next to a buffer spring and a buffer tube and a bolt that doesn't come back that far. Uh, so you definitely notice that the recoil isn't necessarily more harsh than what I'm getting from an AR. It's the same recoil. It's just uh, it encounters my body at different places in different ways. So I have to kind of take that into account with the, with the performance of the gun. Uh, as far as that performance goes, suppressed, it ran fine. During 2,000 rounds, I didn't have a single malfunction, which, to be honest with you, I was expecting something to happen. Be it like, you know, a double feed or, or, or something, but I didn't get anything. And I wasn't shooting the best ammunition either. Uh, I was shooting 55 grain PMC and then some 55 grain Bulgarian, and I can't pronounce the name even if I tried over those, those 2,000 rounds. The only exception to that being the ammunition that I zeroed the gun with. One of the final things, of course, is accuracy. How accurate is the gun? This is another thing that comes up when we talk about bullpups, is they are inherently less accurate, or at least that's a common belief, and there's a lot of evidence to the fact they are a little bit less accurate than a traditional AR uh, platform. So I zeroed at 100 yards and I did a five round confirmation group at 100 yards shooting 77 grain TMK from Atlanta Arm. Now Desert Tech quotes the MDRX as 1.5 MOA accuracy. So here is a five round group I fired for zero confirmation. Show them what kind of accuracy the 16 inch one and one and seven twist two to three wild chamber barrel is capable of. I gotta say, I'm not really unhappy with that. It's not what I want, you know. I, if, if I have all the time in the world, I want all my bullets to go through the same hole, but that's not necessarily realistic. This, I, I, sh I shot that group, I imagine, you know, and, and just seeing uh, shooting throughout the 2,000 reviews, just the overall accuracy. It does open up a little bit when it gets hot, but every gun does. Uh, the overall performance, the overall accuracy is there. It's not as accurate as I would like it to be. However, in realistic terms, that's, that group was fired at 100 yards. So anywhere I had aimed for self-defense purposes, and that's a stretch for most of us, thinking about how could we even articulate or find ourselves in danger to shoot at 100 yards, I'm still hitting right there in that, like they quoted, 1 to 1.5 MOA accuracy. And I was able to reach out with this gun and shoot out the 250 yards on, you know, steel. Uh, didn't be, I wasn't able to shoot at any further than that, but I'm getting 16 inches out of performance out of a much shorter gun. Is this, does this change my mind about bullpups? No, it just becomes an asterisk. I don't like bullpups, but this one's okay. It's not going to be something I'm going to use a lot, but it's definitely something I'm going to keep 
because I do encounter bullpups occasionally with students and, and it, having my own bullpup helps me understand the issues that they encounter on the gun that they chose to use. And I may even pick up another bullpup, uh, the latest Tavor or something like that, just to see if things have gotten better there than they were the last time I shot one with their newest generation. I think that the bullpup, the bullpup design has a lot of merits to it. There's a lot of cool, well, a lot of potential, I should say, there. Unfortunately, no one's gotten everything to work as seamlessly and as smoothly as we can get from an AR in a short stroke piston, long stroke piston, or traditional DI. This is not a bad gun by any stretch of the imagination, even though I've only got 2,000 rounds on it. I'm, I'm very happy with the performance other than some of the QC issues. The grittiness and the controls, the trigger is still bullpup-esque, and that rail is, well, it's bent, and it shouldn't be, and I don't like that at all. And aftermarket options, kind of non-existent. Uh, I gotta go back to the manufacturer and get them to fix it. They do have, have an alternate rail that they make for an over-barrel suppressor system, so I may just get that if I end up getting, you know, a dedicated suppressor for this gun. Uh, I guess that's all I can really say. It's not a bad gun. It's not the greatest gun in the world. I think it, it is the best bullpup I've ever shot. So I'm going to leave it as an asterisk. It's definitely an improvement over the previous MDR that I tried years ago. And I think that they're going to continue to improve upon it, which is something I definitely want to see. If you are looking for a bullpup, this would not be a bad choice at all. I'm Eric Count with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.